First up, we're in Shelbyville, Kentucky for a divorce hearing. The husband in the case has filed a motion that would require his ex-wife to secure her prescription narcotics inside the home where she lives with the couple's three children, aged 14, 16, and 18. They're old enough and they're wise enough not to go around taking, I mean, I only interviewed the children for a few minutes and I get it that they're okay with not taking. Your children are very bright and I can't even believe you would make that motion. Judge, in all due respect, I, I can appreciate what you're saying. Uh, we, they are good children, but there has been some mental health concerns and uh, we just think it's good practice to do that. The attorney is reminding Judge S. Marie Hellard that one of the children expressed thoughts of suicide during his parents' divorce. But when she's still not receptive to the motion... I mean, it's not a two-year-old who'll pick up a pill off the floor. The father does not hold back. Your opinion on that, I'm sorry, is just wrong. Intelligent children oh. die of overdose just as well as unintelligent children. You have no evidence to put before me that oh, these that is... Oh, listen, you need to stop talking. Oh, I'm you sorry. You really do. I, I disagree with you on that. Well, these are fine, the you disagree, this but you're not up here. I've ruled on that. Frustrated, the man makes a quiet comment under his breath. We're ridiculous. But apparently it wasn't quiet enough. You're in contempt of court. You don't tell me that I'm ridiculous. Do you understand me? Have a seat over here, bailiffs. Take him and have him have a seat back there. And Mr. is not going to come in here and bully me. Not going to happen. But under the watchful eyes of the bailiffs, the upset father continues pleading his case. My lives and my children are at stake here, Your Honor. You heard yourself that one of my children talks about committing suicide. Yet they're in a house full of narcotics that are unprotected. Do you not see that that could be an issue? For a moment, it appears the judge might be reconsidering the father's argument. Then again, you don't know what's going on in her house a bit more than a man on the moon. Ultimately, the motion to have the prescription narcotics secured inside the home was denied. And the man was sentenced to community service for contempt of court. You're a very shallow person, aren't you? Then show remorse! Show that you care! We're in San Diego, California, for the sentencing of 22-year-old Alondra Marquez. Seven months earlier, Marquez left a bar after a night of drinking and got behind the wheel of her car, despite her friends begging her not to. Just minutes later, traveling at more than 100 miles an hour, she rear-ended a Lyft rideshare vehicle on the highway. One passenger was ejected from the Lyft car and suffered serious injuries. The other died at the scene. Ironically, both victims had been at the same bar as Marquez earlier that night. Marquez and the Lyft driver were also injured in the crash. At the time, her blood alcohol level was more than three times the legal limit. She later pleaded guilty to gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated and DUI causing injury. Now at sentencing, family and friends of the man killed in the crash share emotional impact statements, including the victim's longtime partner. We were together for almost 11 years until your actions that night took my partner, my world, my everything. But you still don't have any remorse in your heart. You are very shallow, aren't you? You're a very shallow person, aren't you? Then show remorse. Show that you care. Show that you care and that you have a heart. Your actions have said others. I don't care to know you. The only reason why I do know you is because you murdered my partner. Before learning her sentence, Marquez attempts to offer an apology. Although I don't remember, I know, I realized that I really messed up. Clearly, I took someone's life, unfortunately. But I just want you guys to know that I didn't do it on purpose, but I'm sorry. I know you guys are hurting. Now it's up to Judge Polly Shampoon to determine Marquez's sentence. An accident is something that's not avoidable. 
This was avoidable. The maximum allowable sentence for Marquez's charges is 13 years and four months. And that is exactly what the judge hands down. Alondra Marquez is currently serving her sentence within the California Department of Corrections with the possibility of parole after nine years. Next, we head to bond court in Broward County, Florida. Judge John Hurley presiding. The defendant is Fenton Ross, who's charged with possession of Flocka, a synthetic drug. Hurley's about to release Ross on his own recognizance when the state objects and asks for a bond of $1,000. The reason? Ross is homeless, and pretrial services will have a hard time keeping track of him. Ross is represented by public defender Dale Miller, who disagrees with the bond. Judge, at this time, I would object to the court putting him, putting the bond back. Being homeless should not be a pet, an impediment to being pretrial. But Judge Hurley overrules and tries to move on. And that's when Miller speaks up. Oh, um, Yo. Judge, since we're going to warehouse Mr. Ross for a while. Judge Hurley takes exception to Miller's choice of words. Oh, um, Judge, since we're going to warehouse Mr. Ross for a while, can we get a sap? Hold on, hold on, sir. Hold on. You know what? Your unprofessionalism and your smart aleck, Ju sir, sir, don't don't even try. You need to pick up your professionalism. You're taking a shot at the court. It's unprofessional. It is really, uh, sir, you do this quite often. The court's really tired of it. I've admonished you many times. And you know you're taking a shot by saying warehousing. You need to pick up your game for professionalism, sir. You don't need to editorialize. You don't need to give a shot like that to the court. I'm not inclined to hold you in contempt of court. That's not the way I do it. But let me just tell you, you need to pick your game up because your shots to this court really undermine everyone's view of how the court should be run. And you, you need to stop doing this. And I'm gonna ask you to please, sir, take a pause today and think about this and knock it off. Thank you. Judge. But Miller decides not to back down and continues arguing. Judge, I don't I am nothing more about that. For my, I am advocating zealously for my client. You're advocating in an unprofessional way, and I'm not going to hear another client. word about it. After the hearing, Judge Hurley perhaps had a change of heart because the $1,000 bond was eliminated and Ross sent to a drug treatment program. He's eventually released and ordered to pay a fine of $293. This guy right here may tell me that I have to wait, but personally, I don't have to do nothing. Next, we go to a video deposition of hip hop star Dwayne Carter, better known as Lil Wayne. Wayne sued filmmaker Quincy Jones III over a documentary he appeared in during the making of his album, The Carter Three. The artist claimed the film was a, quote, scandalous portrayal of him. Jones, meanwhile, sued Wayne right back, insisting that his claims hurt the film's profits. Wayne was interviewed by Jones's attorney, Peter Ross, who sits off camera. Also in the room was a judge and Wayne's attorney. Here, Ross asked Wayne about an interview he did with TV journalist Katie Couric after they watched a clip of it. Is that an interview that you actually gave with Katie Couric? Is that an interview that I actually gave with Katie Couric? Yeah. What's your yeah. name again? <laughs> hey, well, that, that's not the question. What's like, his what's... name? Pete Ross. Huh? Pete Ross. Pete Ross. Yeah. Just, that's a stupid-ass question. You just saw me on there giving an interview with her. OK. So that was you. Ross moved on to a different topic, specifically Wayne's live performances. Did you perform at the Virgin Mobile Music Fest with Kanye West? I don't know, but I know I did perform at this badass bitch birthday party recently. She was crazy, stupid dick. Wayne didn't seem terribly interested. 
Ross continued asking about the artist's successful career. Isn't it something that you would remember if your album, The Carter Three, was the biggest selling album of the year? Isn't it something that I would remember that? Yes. Isn't that a personal opinion type question? No, that's why I got that. I mean, because I would be actually answering the question to isn't it something? That's my question. Isn't it something? That you would remember. Isn't it something? That's the question I have to answer, Yana. Go ahead. Isn't it something? You can do the best trying to answer it. <laughs> yeah, it's something out of yes. That's my answer. It, yeah, it is something out of your care. ass. Ross took the insult in stride and moved on to a more serious subject. Do you recall that any criminal actions were pending against you? I don't recall any. When Ross shifted to Wayne's criminal history, he received a string of similar sounding answers. Do you recall being at all concerned about any criminal actions that may have been pending against you at the end of 2008? I don't recall. I don't recall that. I don't recall that either. No, I don't recall that. I don't know. I don't know. Do you remember being arrested in or about January 2008 near Yuma, Arizona? No, I don't remember that. Turns out Wayne wasn't the only one losing patience with the interview. Well, how, how much longer is this line of questioning going to go on? Not much longer. That's Wayne's attorney chiming in. All right, go ahead. I don't know. Didn't you win I don't know. the award for best rap album of the year in 2008 know. for the Carter Three? I don't know. Uh, Mr. Carter, you have to wait until the, uh, the attorney is finished a a asking the question, please. I'm sorry, that's my psychic. I'm sorry. Despite Wayne's less than helpful responses, Ross was determined to get through this interview. Go ahead, ask the question. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you like you know to save you, right? In the real world. That guy right there, he can't save you in the real world. Just so you know. What does that mean? I don't have to elaborate. Is Thanks, that a, a threat against no, us? No, it's not. Mr. Mr. Can you just not. ask your next question, please? He can't save you. And what does that mean? I was talking to myself. But in the end, Ross's patience would pay off. A jury later ruled in favor of Jones, agreeing that Wayne's legal claims hurt the film. Wayne was ordered to pay the filmmaker $2.2 million. As for Wayne's original lawsuit, it was thrown out of court. Today, attorney Pete Ross is doing well as a partner in a major Los Angeles-based law firm. We're headed south, way south to Wollongong, Australia for a sentencing hearing. Seated inside what's known as the dock is the defendant, 25-year-old Jesse Rose. The one-time aspiring rugby league player pleaded guilty to the charge of reckless wounding for an assault captured in this surveillance video. After receiving a complaint about Rose's drunken behavior in a pub, he and his mate are asked to leave by security. But when he refuses, a second camera shows things turning physical, and one of the security guards ends up on the floor. Backing away from the situation, Rose then hurls his drinking glass at the downed man, striking him in the head. The guard suffered serious injuries, including a laceration and depressed skull. Now at sentencing, Rose's attorney made a case to not send him to jail claiming he's a changed man, holding down a steady job and living on the straight and narrow. But Judge Andrew Haisler makes it clear this is no kangaroo court, stating that the assault was too serious to consider leniency. And right about now, he announces Rose's sentence, 14 months in prison. But as one door closes for the defendant, he kicks another one wide open. Unhappy with his sentence, Rose perhaps channels his rugby days and boots open the divider door. 
It's unclear what he says to these two security guards. One guard takes a step or two back. After some more jawing, Rose takes things up a notch and throws not one, but two chairs at the guards. Those are not folding chairs Rose just tossed. Those are standard office chairs weighing up to 60 pounds, or 27 kilograms in Australia. What you might have missed is this guard who sneaks around the backside of the dock and, like a boomerang, flies back into action. First bobbing and weaving, then going down under for a tackle. With the help of the other guard, Rose is pinned to the floor. His girlfriend can be seen in the rear of the courtroom. Other officers eventually enter, get Rose to his feet, and escort him out. For his courtroom tantrum, Jesse Rose was charged with property damage and assaulting a law enforcement officer. An additional eight months was added to his original 14-month sentence. Thanks for being a fan of Court Cam. Subscribe to A&E to never miss a new video and catch full episodes on AETV.com.